next day in Lake Success Shopping Center, New Hyde Park, New York, and 39 West Northfield Road, Livingston, New Jersey. This is W. New York. New York Times Youth Forum is on the air. Youth of today, voting citizens of tomorrow. The New York Times, in cooperation with the Dumont Broadcasting Corporation, takes pleasure in presenting its youth forums, in which students meet to exchange ideas on vital issues in the news. Today, the students will discuss, are trust territories becoming independent? Our adult guests, is Benjamin A. Cohen, UN Undersecretary for Trusteeship, Dorothy Gordon, founder of Youth Forums, and moderator of Forums for the Times, will direct the discussion. And now, here is Miss Gordon. Greetings, everybody. Today, our young panel of high school students coming from public, private, and parochial schools are going to tackle quite a question. How much are trust territories becoming independent, or are they becoming entirely independent? It's quite a question. We have our adult expert guest as usual, but before I introduce him, we'll ask the panel members to introduce themselves. Will you start, Jesse? My name is Jesse Auerbach. I come from Long Beach High School, Long Island. My name is Marion Leaf. I come from James Madison High School in Brooklyn. I am Carlos Arnaldo of Regis High School, New York City. I'm Marion Perlman from Evander Charles High School, the Bronx. My name is Karyuk Jiri from Kenya, now a new school for social research. And Carlos, you come from the Philippines. That's right. And we have two Marions on the program so that we'll have to call one Marion Leaf and the other Marion Perlman. I hope I remember to do that so that we can identify you. Our guest comes to us from Chile. He's been with the United Nations since his very inception. In 1946, he became Assistant Secretary General for the Department of Public Information. And since January 1955, he has been Under Secretary for Trusteeship and Information from Non-Self-Governing Territories. He says that's the longest title that anybody has in the United Nations and that the whole subject is the longest and, and perhaps one of the most difficult subjects. It gives me great pleasure indeed to welcome one of our good friends of the forums, Dr. Benjamin A. Cohn. Of the Honorable Benjamin. Now, Ben, you've been on the program, so we shan't waste another moment and start right away with the question, are trust territories becoming independent? Carlos? I'd say trust territories are becoming independent under a new concept of guidance of these countries. This, go ahead. You want the definition? Uh, now, well, this, go uh, ahead. Anything is yours. Go ahead. This concept is called the trusteeship system. It is a system whereby these countries, these non-self-governing territories, are committed to the care of another administering power to develop their political affairs, their e economic affairs, social and educational affairs also. Would you, could you add to that, or is that about um, as good as it can be, Ben Cohen? Well, I would say it's quite a good definition, although more emphasis should be placed upon the fact that there is a commitment under the international trusteeship system to promote in every possible way the attainment of self-government or independence by these trust territories. Which brings us to our very question, are they becoming independent? Jesse? Oh, I say no. I think in the very uh, operation of the trust system itself, there's a major fault. This fault is that the trusteeships are given over to colonial powers whose national interest would be to annex these trust territories and use them for their own wealth. I think that a solution to this would be to give these territories over to members of the Asian African bloc and that their national interest and natural interest would be to give these territories independence. You say the Asian African bloc, bloc. because most of them are, are within those areas, areas. Uh, yes. geographically. Uh, Marion Leaf. Well, actually that isn't so, because if you've been reading the newspaper, you would have noticed that Togoland's about to 
have a chance for independence with the Gold Coast in March 1957, I definitely think that's a step in the right direction. Um, uh, can you hold it? Uh, let's get these other young people on the other side. Uh, now, Marion Perlman. Well, it seems to me that the colonial terror, the colonial powers, are perhaps the best people to run, administer these in the new trust nations because they've had experience before with their colonial powers. They know what to do, how to handle it, and they have the wealth to sponsor all kinds of development programs which the new nations of Asia and Africa don't have. Uh, now, let's get our friend from Ken Kenya, Jerry, uh, Jerry, is that right? Yes, I think the uh, <coughs> territories are becoming independent, but very, very slow. What I think should be would be that the United Nations should have a timetable of a target date instead of going to the Security Council debating when a state should become self-government. And I think they are coming independent, but there should be a tip table. You feel it's too slow? It's too slow. Uh, Dr. Cohn, this is within well, your territory. Jerry, there is a certain amount of uh, special pleading, let's say, what you have just said, because the problem whether a target date for independence should be set has been under consideration in the trusteeship council for several years. Now, the problem is this. You cannot establish the same target date for all territories. There's no question. The degree of their development, the manner in which their people are becoming used to the processes of self-government is different from territory to territory. So what the council has done is to establish what are called intermediate target dates in the economic, the social, and the educational fields, and to promote in this manner the more rapid coming of the day when independence or self-government will come to each of those territories. Which brings us to a very important question, and that is, who should decide when a nation should be, or a country should be given independence? Um, Carlos, yes. Well, first of all, uh, the administering territory should know when their, their, uh, the, rather, the administering authority should know when their trust territory is becoming independent through their own experiences. Secondly, the General Assembly has great influence in determining whether they are to become independent or not. And this is an impartial body which uh, does not take sides in this uh, affair but uh, actually gives its recommendations and urges uh, whether it should become or should not become independent or self-governing. You feel then, Carlos, that it should come from an outside agency, an outside other countries? I think it should be influenced by the, author uh, the administering authority through the will of the people, but influenced by the, uh, rather determined by an outside authority. Jesse? I think the people who know best are when the uh, trust territories in question should gain their independence are the people that live under the trust uh, system itself. And uh, by plebiscite, as in Togoland, they should determine their will for independence. And Marion Lee? Well, actually, you can't expect the people uneducated in modern ways to judge whether they're ready for independence. You have to take an educated people to decide whether they are men uneducated, un not really uncivilized, but uncivilized in the eyes of Westerners decide when these people are ready for self-determination. Oh, there's a look on Jerry's face. Come on, Jerry. Well, I was about to say that uh, by the words that you kid, I don't know what you mean, because a person can decide when he wants. It's not necessary to find a person when he's hungry to go to a person and ask him, am I hungry? The person himself, he knows when he needs something to eat. And therefore, I think the people are very basic to judge when they want self-independent. Uh, Marion Perlman. Well, they seem definitely to want to decide for themselves. In the General Assembly the other day, the delegate from the Sudan said that he felt that even though his country had recently received its end independence, that they should have been allowed to become independent first and then to build themselves up second. He felt that they could do a better job. They all had a common purpose to work for, to build up their country and, as a newly independent state. Dr. Ben Cohn, you have just returned, as I know, from a trip through Africa. And you visited the trust territories, you also visited dependent peoples, colonial peoples, and so forth. What did you, what would you answer to that question? The procedure established under the Charter of the United Nations provides that to 
cancel a trusteeship agreement which has entrusted the administration of a given territory to one or more powers, it is necessary to reach first an understanding of the wishes of the people. So the popular will in each of the trust territories must be consulted, as we did recently in the case of Togoland and the British administration. Now, once the people are being consulted and the administering authority agree that something should be done to move to a self-government or independence, the matter is considered in the trusteeship council first and then by the General Assembly. And if the General Assembly agrees, the trusteeship agreement can be declared no longer in effect and the people given their independence. That is the procedure. Well, that's the procedure, but, but the, the question I asked, and I'm going to go all the way back to Jesse, who at the very beginning of the program said that he felt that, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, you, all right, go ahead, you said There's a basic you. fault in the uh, carrying out of the trusteeship uh, Yes, go ahead system and, itself. and tell us how you feel about this question. And it, when you have a colonial power, uh, over a trust, uh, trust territory, it's only natural they would try and annex it. As you have uh, in the, Fr the French Parliament itself determines the laws of French Cameroons and Togoland. Now, that, that is, I don't see any difference between a colony there. The only, uh, and I think it's not only in that country, it's in Niger uh, Tanganyika, is governed by many laws of Kenya. And go right down the line of all 11 trust territories. What a panel, four hands following a rough, Carlos. Well, first of all, the, uh, the power of the administering authority is first of all checked by the uh, right of petition of the trust territory itself. Secondly, it is uh, also influenced by the recommendations, the uh, petitions, and the affairs which the, rather the uh, things that are said in the General Assembly. It is an impartial check on the administering, administering authority to make sure that they don't uh, abuse these uh, uh, trust territories as they have in the mandate system. Carlos, you come from the Philippines. That's right. Well, do you think that the Philippines would have not, uh, the Philippine people would not have progressed as quickly if they had not been under the United uh, States? Well, I think that the uh, Philippines paved the way for the trusteeship, actually, because it was the first country to become independent, uh, rather raised from the uh, state of almost primitiveness to a state of a modern government under the direction of the United States. And uh, I think that this country has paved the way for the trusteeship. Uh, Marion Leaf. Well, I was going to say something before. I feel that what good, do, what good does this in independence do to a country if they're going to be overtaken by a powerful nation? If these, uh, Trust territories are not economically stable enough to stand up in a world uh, today where there are so many aggressive nations. I think they'd be overtaken in no time because of their vast resources. Marion Perlman? Well, the, um, the, the companies in the um, administering nations have bought interest in these trust territories. They, private enterprise as well as the government, do run the industry so that when the territory is declared independent, Although the nation itself moves out, the industry does not. It is still there and is still being built up. Um, look, Dr. Cohn, you just can't sit back there and relax that much. Just a minute, we're coming back to you in a minute, but I want to hear Jerry, and then you're, you're, you're in this now. 